stop. And you hold a cane in your hand. Hold it right there. That's close enough. Uh, I just had shivers up my spine just now. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our next video. Today, we're going to continue talking about safety and self-defense. Now, uh, this has been a long series. And remember, the most important thing is prevention. So go back and watch those videos. Use your intuition, use your situational awareness, uh, use your voice, use lots of things. So hopefully, using all those things, you'll never even ever even begin to uh, be in a situation where you have to do something like this. But if the situation just goes so bad that you're in a fight, we want to help you, uh, at least to some degree, with how to deal with that. Today we're going to talk about uh, uh, edged weapon, edged weapons and striking weapons. You and I, you've never been to a knife fight? No. Nope, never. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in a knife fight. I've yeah. never seen a knife fight. <laughs> no. In movies, maybe. In that's movies, about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's about and, it. So. And believe me, what you see in movies is just so com completely ridiculous and fictionalized yeah. that it, it has, bears no resemblance to real life. But I've done a lot of research, and a lot of this is just common sense. Uh, but another place that this really comes into play is in four-legged predators. And you and I have both had some fair amount of experience with uh, four-legged experience predators because you and I both spend a lot of time in the backcountry. Absolutely. So you have dealt uh, with uh, be both bears and mm -hmm. mountain lions face-to-face. -face. Yeah. And uh, so just briefly tell us about that. Uh, so with the bears, especially working as a campground host, oftentimes we would have to scare them away. Uh, you know, and I did work up in Alaska as well, and I did have some run-ins with some bears as well out there. Uh, again, the, the big thing is trying to prevent the situation from happening. I've never had a bear or mountain lion attack me, but I've certainly been around there and I wanted to make sure that I had the tools necessary to feel safe in those situations. You've been face to face with the mountain lion and bears. Yes. And so, and, and as well as I have, mm -hmm. and, and felt completely, totally helpless. Yeah. Uh, that was the main thing that felt uh, felt to me is how, compl I had a, I had a, like a three inch pocket knife in my pocket. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that's, and it was on my key ring. Yeah. I'm gonna hold my key ring and fight my to fight the bear off. Yeah, this was a mountain lion. I mean, face to face with a mountain lion. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. No, no I'm just gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> the mountain lion decided whether I was going to live or die, and I had no no inter no interaction, no input into that decision at all. It was his decision to make. Absolutely. But so uh, since then, I've had another encounter where I had I heard a snap. Uh, I was in in the um, just outside of uh, uh, Yosemite, and I was out for a long walk. And I heard a snap above me, and the dog who was with me at that time, Homer, ran straight home. And this dog was not afraid of anything that lived. But as soon as it heard that snap and got a smell, it ran straight home. I'm convinced there was a mountain lion above me, uh, stalking me and ready to get me. And again, I didn't have any self any self defense. So. Um, and Homer's instincts were dead on. Oh, Homer's instincts were yeah. dead on. So Run away. He knew. He knew something bigger and meaner and likely to kill him yes. basically was there so he's like i'm out of here and that's um, always the answer yeah prevention absolutely. is first and foremost escape and then escape that's absolutely. always second we're only talking about if those things don't work mm -hmm. someone's standing in front of you and wants to hurt you mm -hmm. and the key thing is time and uh distance because uh talking to but two-legged predators i've done a lot of research on it and because there are video ca camcorders all over, you know, you can't go anywhere, and especially in prison where there are a lot of knife fights, there have been a lot of um, videos taken of real life knife fights, not the fictional stuff you are ever gonna see on television. And the way it works is super fast and completely out of control. And uh, so I read one article that had d discussed like 150 different knife fights they had captured on video. And he said, he said 70% of them went just like this. He said, the, the knife was heck here behind me, and he reached out. And he said, this is how you're always going to see it in prison. Because un, as an untrained person, you're, you're going to focus on the hand. That's just what humans do. Whatever's coming at you, you're going to focus mm -hmm. on the, this hand. You're not even going to see this hand. You're not going to see the knife in this hand. You're going to focus on this hand. And what he's going to want to do is grab you, and then, and it's like a, a, a stab a second. The it's a sewing not, machine. Yeah, it's a sewing machine. He yeah. has a stab a second. And he's not going very deep. He's not going very hard, but he's stabbing you continually, and you, you're gonna you're gonna lose out. So that's the way knife fights actually work the vast majority of the times in real life. And so you got to create distance and speed right away. And so 
That's what we're going to talk about here, whether it's two-legged or four-legged. We're, we're not suggesting in any way you go get a knife and try to learn how to fight with a knife, because that's yeah. just that's foolishness. It's improbable that that'll ever happen. Right. Yeah. And so we're suggesting distance and escape. And so we're talking about some ways to do that. Now, when it came to the predators, what I decided to do was go with a spear. This is a, a, a homemade spear. You can buy real spears, but this is a homemade spear. This is a, a cold steel Bushman knife, and I carried this after the after my inter encounters with the uh, with the um, mountain lion. Mountain lion mm -hmm. I started carrying this. The idea was speed. He's going to have the element of surprise. He lost the element of surprise. That's the only reason that one didn't go after me. Um, when that when that twig snapped, and I looked up and stopped, and he he lost it. And the, I had one that stepped out in front of me on a trail, and he had no element of surprise because he didn't know I was there. Um, so I was going to, then I started carrying this. I mean, I literally started carrying this in my hand and I kept the scabbard on it because this is very sharp. And then if ever there was a, a, a mountain lion, I could get it up. That's all I had to do. And he's going to be landing on top of me. And then when he lands on top of me, he's going to impale himself. I'm not going to defend myself. He's going to impale himself. And of course, what's most likely is he's coming from behind, uh, almost certainly. My only hope then is by having it in my hand like this, I'd have some warning and I can get around and get it up so that he can heal and peel himself again. That's the only hope I saw against, and I think it's basically the same thing with bears. With bears, we think the answer is um, guns and bear spray, but they're too fast. It's almost certainly too fast. This is difficult. You know, you're not going to ever walk around a town with this. This is never going to work for two-legged predators. Mm -mm. Uh, but let me show you another. Let me show you another option for different reasons. I ended up with two of them. One, one of them wasn't mine. It was given to me, and I'm going to pass it on. This is the actual cold steel Bushman. Uh, this is an extremely good knife. It's about 21 bucks. Uh, it's super cheap. It's got a hollow handle. Uh, you just uh, whittle. You use the knife. You whittle down one end uh, of that. You whittle that down end. Put this in, and it's got a hole, and you put a screw in it, and that's what I've done with this other one. So that's how that would work. And again, this you're not going to walk around town with this; you'd be arrested immediately. Um, but there's another knife I want to show you here. This is a Smith and Wesson. Uh, I bought this on Amazon. It was twenty-one dollars. Both of these knives are twenty-one dollars and change, and it unscrews and has the exact same thread as uh, a broom handle. Any broom handle you've ever got, you probably have one of these in your home somewhere, or possibility at least, and you just screw it on, and now you've got a spear. And uh, you could, what you could do is walk around with the knife on your uh, hip and, and use this as a walking stick. So this is pretty much an outdoors only walking in the back country. You know there's bears and mountain lion around deal. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to show it to you. Uh, a much better idea is a walking stick or a walking a hiking staffs, which Brian will show you. Yeah, and so this is just your run of the mill hiking stick um, that you'd get at a lot of the uh, tents around here in Quartzsite even. In fact, that's where I bought this. I think it's five bucks. Uh, and so again, you're trying to keep your distance. So you can just use it as a walking stick. Theoretically, you could carve this down to be able to fit something like this on there uh, so that you could have both. Uh, but again, with the keeping of the distance, you now have this distance away from you. So I'm, uh, so this is probably about four and a half feet distance that you can keep. Uh, again, it doesn't have a very pokey end, but you are just looking to create that distance and getting things away from you. The other thing that I'm more likely to use, because I use trekking poles while I'm hiking and backpacking, uh, so it's an extendable trekking pole. So it starts out like this, and you can extend it all the way to this. And this is about the same as the other walking stick. And again, you're looking at something to prevent you, something from coming closer to you. And so again, and this thing does have a very, very pokey end. So this will, this will impale someone. I mean, it's, it's a little blunt at the end, but it's enough that with enough force, that you will be able to protect yourself. Now, the next thing that I really want to talk to you about is a cane. And uh, canes are actually protected by law. By law, you can take a cane anywhere on, on an airplane, on anywhere. You, No one can ever say to you, you can't use a cane in here. And they can't say to you, 
well, do you really need a cane? Can you prove you need a cane? I think a cane is one of the very best things you can do for yourself for self-defense. Again, if he's, somebody's coming at you and he's at all threatening and you're talking, so talking is one of the first layers of defense, talking and then yelling and doing it right away because he's coming right at you and you say, stay back, that you're close enough, stay back, you're making me uncomfortable. But if you got nothing, then he's not going to stop. But if you pull up a cane and you're standing there like this, he's at least going to think about it. You pull this up and you say, you stop right there. Uh, you know, your self-confidence and a weapon in your hand, even if you never deliver a blow, even if you don't ever do anything else, you've probably greatly increased your likelihood that he's going to give up and just go find an easier prey. That's the thing you want with all predators, two and four legged. Mm -hmm. You want them to find an easier prey. That's why you raise your hands. Absolutely. You're big. They don't want something big to fight with. Nope, absolutely. Yeah, because with bears and mountain lions, you do want to present yourself as very large and bigger than they are if you can. Self confidence is 90% of the safety that you need in your life. And if you're speaking very firmly to him, you're saying you stop and you've got a weapon in your hand, that's about all you can do. And if it doesn't work, You've done all you can do, and I, I personally love knowing that I've made reasonable efforts and cautions. Now, this is a kind of a weaponized cane, and these are perfectly legal. Again, it's just it's fancy, um, and I actually have come to the point where I need a cane in my life. You say, well, I don't need a cane. What if you're, what if you're 30, 40, 50? Well, a lot of, you can be young and need a cane. If you go to Google and you look up self-defense cane, you will find dozens of guys teaching self-defense with canes, and I believe... I believe that for the vast majority of us, because we are predominantly older, not all, but a lot of us are older, a cane is the most invaluable thing you can have in your hand. And not just a cheap Walmart uh, metal cane, because that's not going to do it. Um, a good, I mean, and you don't have to be this good, but a good wood cane will really make a big difference in your life. So keeping distance, uh, taking command, you know, you're taking command. And even if you think you can't do that, if you practice, I bet you can. That's in you uh, somewhere. You just have to find it. I don't recommend you try to get in a knife fight with, a, with any predator because that just is going to be a losing battle. But with a bear or a mountain lion, if you have a knife on your hip and you have the time to get it out, and those are the hard parts because yeah. you usually just don't have the time out. Yeah. If bear, let's talk specifically about a bear or a mountain lion, either one. If you can get your knife in your hand and he lands on you, your best, your only ho real hope, is that you can get your hand up and you can go for his face. If you can start slashing on a, on, a, on a bear's or a mountain lion's face, if you can get the knife in his mouth and he's, bite, and he's gonna bite down on it because that's what they do, it's their instinct. They're, in, they're animals of instinct just like we are. He'll bite down on it, he could impale himself right through his own brain with this knife. So if you can get the, and that's the thing, you probably won't have the time or the presence of the mind. Mm -hmm. You may not even have a knife. Just carrying, it doesn't have to be this knife, it's a small knife, yeah. just any knife. Actually, the smaller the better. If you can slash away at his face and his eyes and get that thing in his mouth, uh, that's probably the very best thing you can do against a bear or a mountain lion that is actually going after you. Uh, again, the big problem, it, uh, I live in Alaska all my life, so I know an awful lot about bear attacks, and uh, is that they're so, they are so fast, you can't react in time. It's just instant. But uh, that's why, in my opinion, this in your hand, there's no reaction. It's here. Yeah. Uh, so my self-defense is right here, but you're not going to walk around uh, any town with this in your hand without being arrested. And even if you don't get the pointy end towards the bear, you still have this. Right. And that alone will give you some distance. Uh, because they can't get through this way with their body at least. This, yes, their arms and claws could, but it's still, you are creating a different target and maybe they'll just go for this instead of you. Uh, and so again, it might buy you a little time and more time for you to escape, uh, which is really what, what is key here, I think. Okay, so here's just some ideas. We're throwing these out here for you to do, what, do whatever you want with. Personally, I think a cane, you can just train yourself to carry a cane with you. Take some, uh, t go to YouTube, watch some of these videos. Train with friends and family on developing an aggressive attitude. Stop! And you hold a cane in your hand. Hold it right there. That's close enough. Uh, I just had shivers up my spine just now. I was like, whoa. <laughs> the whole point of this whole series has been 
your safety is remarkably in your hands. And these are ways that you can take your safety into your hands and be the master of your own fate. You don't have, now sometimes it's just luck. Bad, you were at the wrong place at the wrong time. That can happen. But even then, you can be prepared and ready as, as well as you can. So I'd really like to hear from you. Could you do this stuff? Could you train yourself to carry a cane around? Just a normal looking old wooden cane you go buy anywhere, but a solid oak or hickory cane that's good sized. I mean, a real one. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it. You can get one for 50, 100 bucks. A good solid one. Could you do that and train yourself? And could you make yourself learn situational awareness and intuition and see a bad guy and say, hey, how you doing? I hope you'll go practice it. And uh, let us know in the comments below. How's it going? Was it too hard? Was it impossible? Can you do that? I'd really like to hear from you if these are things you can apply in your life and what other things have you done that's keeping you safe. We'd really like to know that. Well, Brian, thanks for sharing your experiences with these things. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for, uh, for doing this video. This is great. I think it's great information out there for you guys. So if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.